Hello and welcome to another screencast about optimization problems. So this optimization problem, we have a uh, corral here uh, that is in the shape of a rectangle with a semicircle whose diameter fits precisely over one of these sides of the rectangles in the figure below. And as this little note here says, uh, this line is here just to show you where the uh, rectangle starts and the or stops and the uh, semicircle begins. It's not really part of the area or perimeter or anything. We have 900 feet of fencing to make this corral and what we want to do is find the dimensions of the corral with maximum area. So right off the bat we see that this first of all is an optimization problem because I'm being asked to maximize something and the first important thing we need to realize is what quantity am I being asked to optimize? That answer is area of this whole thing here. And so the first order of business is to get a formula for area. I have to get a formula for area because I'm going to use calculus to find the absolute maximum of area. If I don't have a function for it I can't use calculus. So let's think about the area formula for this uh, situation here. Now, there are several variables involved here. The area in general, just generally speaking, would be the area of this rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. So we have to first of all think about the area of each of those pieces. So the area of a rectangle is just uh, the width times the length. And we need to slap some variables on this. Let's call this direction x and call this y. So the area inside here is uh, x times y. But that's not the whole area. I also have to add on this uh, semicircular area here. Now, in general, I know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius, and I need to divide that in half because this is a semicircle. So uh, an initial stab at the formula here would be to say that area is equal to the area of the rectangle, which is xy, plus uh, pi over 2 times r squared. Now that's a formula for area, and it, if we had an x, a y, and an r, this would be perfectly fine. But what we want to do is find this area's absolute maximum value using calculus. And now I have not one, but not even two, but three independent variables here. So I need to go through some steps to get this area formula down to one variable. That's my immediate sub-goal. Get this uh, area formula down to one independent variable and only one. So how am I going to do that? Well, a couple of things. First of all, I noticed that since the rectangle side here is has to be the diameter of the semicircle. See, uh, the, the diameter is the side of the rectangle. So the diameter of the circle is uh, y. Okay, so the diameter, let's write diameter over here. The diameter of the circle is equal to y. So the radius over here, which is half the diameter, the radius would have to be one half of y. It's exactly half that. So this much right here, that radius is y over 2. So I can make one quick substitution in here, uh, xy plus pi over 2, not r squared, but y over 2 squared. Now just to clean that up, that is uh, xy plus pi over 2, and y over 2 squared is y squared over 4. So I have um, a slightly simplified version of my area formula, area equals xy plus and multiply those two fractions together, it's pi over 8 y squared. Okay, so that's progress because I now have only two variables, but I still don't have one variable yet. Okay, so I need to do something to eliminate either x or y. Now to do that, I need to look back up into the problem statement and think about constraints. And I see, and maybe you see too, this, uh, this piece of information right there has not been used yet, and I bet that's where the constraint's going to come from. So it says 900 feet of fencing. That's a, that's a constraint in this problem. And so the entire perimeter around this entire outside of the corral has to be 900 feet. So let's play with that. So 900 feet. And again, the units really help us here. This is 900 feet. So anything that happens on the right-hand side has to be uh, involving linear feet, okay? not area. I don't want to throw in pi r squared or anything over here because that's, the units wouldn't be right. So what is the perimeter of this thing? Well, I would have to have one x, a second x, and a y just to handle this much of the corral, the uh, sort of the outside of the rectangle here. So it would at least be y plus 2x. And then I would have to add on the uh, sort of circumference of this semicircle. So the circumference of a circle in general is 2 pi r. And I'm going to take half of that because it's only half of a circle. Okay, so that would be the perimeter around my circle. And now I can do a quick few uh, quickie or one quick uh, uh, simplification there just to divide the one half into the two. And r, remember, was y over two, so I can make another simplification. So y plus two x plus pi times y over two instead of r. So now I can get some like terms together, and this is two x plus, I have a y plus a pi over two times y. Let me just write that out, y plus pi over two 
times y. And now if I factor the y out here, all that 900 stuff is equal to 2x plus the quantity 1 plus pi over 2 times y. And that's all equal, remember, to 900. Okay, so here's a constraint that I'm going to use here. Um, 900 equals all this stuff. So if I take this equation and solve it for x, I can replace right there in my area formula. I think I'm going to solve it for x because the, there's a lot of stuff happening to y. There's only one instance of x. So it makes more sense to solve this constraint equation for x. Let's do that real quickly. Then obviously we're going to need some more real estate to work with. So let me subtract the uh, y stuff over to one side. 900 minus 1 plus pi over 2 times y, and that equals 2x, and so finally x is equal to one half of all this, one half times 900 minus the quantity 1 plus pi over 2 times y. Okay, and what I'm going to do next is take this, <coughs> all this stuff for x, and just substitute it for, literally for x in my area formula. That's going to have to happen on the next page. Okay, so I've copied down some information from the previous slides. Here's the uh, area formula, and here's the constraint that we just came up with. In these succeeding three lines here, I've just done some arithmetic to simplify things. Uh, you can stop and pause the uh, video and watch this if you want to. Uh, this comes down to x equals 450 plus negative 2 minus pi over 4y when simplified. Again, pause the video and work that arithmetic out if you need to. So now I'm going to take that x value, or that x expression, and plug it in right there and uh, see what I can get for my new improved area formula. So this is going to be kind of big, uh, 450 minus, or plus uh, negative 2 minus pi over 4y, the whole thing times y, plus pi over 8y squared. Let's just keep working with this and see where it leads. Uh, this is 450y uh, plus negative 2 minus pi over 4y squared, multiplying the y through here, plus pi over 8y squared. And I see an opportunity to add uh, fractions here, so I'm going to multiply the top of, and bottom of this fraction by 2 to get like uh, com the common denominators. And that would be negative 4 minus 2 pi over 8. And I'm going to add on another pi over 8 uh, times y squared. So my area formula, when it's finally simplified all the way down, 450y plus negative 4 minus pi over 8y squared. Now, that's area as a function of one variable. So the rest of this is going to go pretty quickly, because now I'm going to look for the critical numbers of this function, classify them as local extrema, argue that they are uh, our absolute extrema, and that will be the end of the problem. So a prime, let's take the derivative, a prime is going to be 450 plus, using the power rule, this would be negative 4 minus pi over 4 y. Okay, and this is a linear function, and so the derivative is never undefined, so the only critical numbers are going to happen if this thing is equal to 0. Now subtract this part over to the right side, and you'll get 450 equals plus 4 plus pi over 4 times y. And so finally, y is equal to 1800 that's 4 times 450 over 4 plus pi. And that's uh, about equal to 252.04 feet. Now, that's a critical number. Is it a local uh, extreme value? Well, let's take the second derivative of this function and see. A double prime uh, is just going to be equal to negative 4 minus pi over 4. And that's a negative number. So a double prime is always negative. That means this is the only critical number for A, and A is always concave down. So the function has to look like this, and there's my critical number. So that means that uh, A does, in fact, have an absolute, not just a local, but an absolute maximum at this Y value. So the only thing left to do is to calculate the X. And if I go back to my formula here for X, that's up here, I'll save you the work. But if you put that y value back in for x, you end up with 126.02 feet. It's exactly half of what y is. And that's the answer to our problem.